Okay guys, so I have a confession to make. I'm a Zoomer. I never got into big MMOs like RuneScape or WoW when I was a kid. This was probably due to my experience with games up to age 10, consisting of uh, a port of Sonic the Hedgehog for my mom's iPod Nano, followed by a crippling Wizard 101 addiction. At any rate, one of the first MMOs that I actually remember getting excited for before its launch was Arc Age. Arch Age? Arc Age? A free-to-play MMO that advertised itself as a massive open-world sandbox adventure. And little, young, impressionable me ate that up, thinking that this was it. This was the big new gaming release that my life had been leading up to. A game in which I could forge my own adventure, carrying on to glory. Then it actually came out, and it was a pay-to-win mess. Little me was mortified scarred for life, inflicted with big sad plus five. Moving on. Arcage's developer, XL Games, seemingly in an effort to get their game into Western markets, recently dropped Arcage Unchained, Unchained, presumably after realizing how much Western gamers would spend on games that they had already purchased. And besides sounding like a sketchy romance novel, Unchained reworks the game's resources and cash shop mechanics to a buy-to-play model with only cosmetic microtransactions. So, who knows? Maybe this game is now actually playable and an enjoyable experience now that the developers don't expect you to shell out money for the privilege of existing on their server space. Now, when I started playing, I was ready to deal with large queue times. However, that wasn't the case, actually, and I was able to immediately jump in and, oh my goodness, what on earth is that? So yeah, I decided to make my character a Warborn which I could say is because I'm a fan of their racial abilities, but it's actually because they're just so damn chunky. chunky. For my starting class, I picked up the Swift Blade skill set since I assumed I would start my adventure ganking people for their stuff and not, uh, this. After waiting for the characters to become more than just eyes and hair, I started customizing my guy, ignoring the copious amounts of fine-tuning options and ending up with this beautiful blue boy. For the name, I had to pick something memorable, something powerful, a name that would leave a permanent mark, searing itself into the minds of all who crossed my path in the future. So yeah, I named him Demon Dan and went to start my adventure, which is when the game crashed, but it's okay. I got back in with only a minimal queue time. After waking up on the side of the road under a rock, the first thing that happens to our hero, Demon Dan, is that he gets fired from his job for sleeping in, due to suffering from a nightmare that plagues all the members of his race throughout their entire existence, which I believe is colloquially referred to as a bruh moment. On my way around, desperately attempting to find a job so I could live, I was immediately put into fight or flight mode as I was flung over the horizon by a dust devil. This was followed by me immediately realizing that dust devils made for the best form of transportation, even if they can occasionally result in some sprained ankles and shattered tibias. Then I kicked over some rocks, stabbed some rock monsters, and continued on my way, after of course taking a detour to shank some robo chickens and green goop guys. Then, I saw my first target, another warborn named Kiara. I didn't wish for my first mark to be one of my own kind, but I steeled myself, target approached them, and then sat on the back of their pet. After asserting my dominance to the populace at large, I continued on my journey, eventually hitting level 7, where I was immediately overwhelmed by the skill interface before I picked Shadow Play as my second ability set. Aura Aura, fellow kids. In order to continue with my main quest, I talked to a fisherman, who gave me his very own, singular, old fishing boat, despite there clearly being dozens washed up on the beach. I took my newly acquired vessel to the nearby island, where I narrowly survived a harrowing high-speed rowboat crash. Back on the mainland, Demon Dan jammed out. before having a nightmare and getting bullied by the ghost of an old man. What? How? I asked you a question. Do you remember me? Do you remember killing me? And my people? Leave me alone, ghost. I know very well what I did. Oh, I didn't hurt your feelings, did I? 
Now Demon Dan is many things, but Limber is not one of them. So I needed a beefy mount to support his Samsung smart fridge of a torso. The mount in question was an armadillo pangolin. And it just so happened that while I was messing around at the pangolin farm, a war ended. Now isn't that great? Now I can all just put up our weapons and not do war anymore. After embarrassing myself in, say, chat and playing the flute to hide my shame, I raised my pet to adulthood in the span of about a minute and a half. Also, you can't slash dance in this game, but you can slash flowers. <laughs> While riding my scaled mammalian mount around on dust devils, I came to a genius idea. I would become a pirate in my dinky rowboat. Unfortunately, my first prize vessel wasn't giving itself up so easily, and wouldn't let me on board to pillage and attack the crew. So I just headed out to sea. Of course, before I could even find a ship of overleveled mobs to one-shot me, the game teleported me back to spawn for trespassing in an area that wasn't ready yet. And with that, day one of Demon Dan's adventure came to a close. Except for the fact that I couldn't log out because my boat was still deployed and I couldn't get my boat back because it was too far away, even though it was the game's fault that I was put back here in the first place. Who even wants to steal my boat? There's like 20 on the shore next to that lying bastard of an old man. 